Okay, in this video, we're going to solve uh, the, the basic type of calorimetry problem. And uh, in this case, what we're going to do is react um, a certain amount of grams of zinc with a dilute solution of hydrochloric acid, although the hydrochloric acid will be in excess by comparison to the zinc. And we're going to determine the delta H of this reaction per mole of zinc using the technique of calorimetry to do that. So um, first off, let's just take a look at the chemical reaction. So we're going to have zinc metal and it's going to be reacted with a solution of hydrochloric acid. In this problem, we're not stipulating what the concentration is, just that it's a dilute solution and that it's in excess by comparison to the zinc metal that's put into the reaction. The two, re the two products of the reaction will be zinc chloride, which is an aqueous solution of zinc chloride, and hydrogen gas. Now, when we inspect the equation, you can see that it's not balanced. On the right side, we've got two CLs and two hydrogens, so we're going to need to put a 2 in front of the HCl so that our chemical equation is balanced. And what I'm going to do now is uh, write in the amount of zinc that we're going to be using. So it's going to be 0 0.103 grams of the zinc metal combined with 50 mLs of solution. Now, the problem, uh, you have to pay attention to the wording of the problem. So let's just go through that. Calculate the delta H of reaction when 0 0.103 grams of zinc reacts with an excess of hydrochloric acid in a total solution of 50 mLs. Assume the final density of the solution is 1 gram per mL and that the heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per degree C per gram. And I should have said specific heat capacity of water All right, is 4.18 joules per degree C per gram. So what this means is that um, even though we're reacting a certain mass uh, with it within this 50 ml solution of hydrochloric acid um, we're assuming that the final density of the solution is going to remain that of the density of water and that the heat capacity of the solution is going to be the same as that of water this just makes it easier to do the problem now we're going to be using calorimetry to solve this problem so the reaction is being carried out in a coffee cup calorimeter. So we have the coffee cup itself which is insulated and then it's full of 50 mLs of water. Now this problem is based on the first law of thermodynamics and the first law of thermodynamics says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. So whatever energy is either released or absorbed when this chemical reaction takes place is going to either be released or absorbed in terms of the same magnitude by the calorimeter. So we're going to stipulate that the chemical reaction is our system. Okay, so in these problems you need to stipulate compartments because energy is going to be moving into or out of these compartments. So we're going to stipulate that the chemical reaction is my system and we're going to stipulate that the surroundings, I'll just abbreviate surroundings, is the calorimeter, the coffee cup thermometer and the 50 mLs of water or the 50 mLs of what's going to be a solution is in here. So I'm going to move our chemical reaction in here. So we're going to have our zinc metal reacting with two, hydrochlor um, two hydrochlorics to produce zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. And this is our system. All right, and I'll just put that little label on it. Now, in the problem, 
it's stipulated that what happens in the calorimeter is the temperature goes up from 22.5 degrees centigrade to 23.7. So we actually have a temperature increase in the calorimeter. I'm going to write our T1 over here, the temperature at which the process starts is 22.5 degrees C. And the temperature where the process finishes is 23 0.7 degrees centigrade. So we see that the temperature increased. Now, the only way that that can happen is if energy was released from the chemical reaction and transferred into our surroundings. Okay, and the first law of thermo says whatever energy is lost at constant pressure from our system has to be gained by our surroundings. So this process was exothermic for the system and it was endothermic for my surroundings. All right, now we can know how much energy was released by the chemical reaction because we can calculate the delta H of the surroundings very easily. It's a quantity that will be equal to the mass of the surroundings times the specific heat of the H2O. In this case, the specific heat of the solution, which we're saying is the same as the specific heat of the water times the change in temperature, where change in temperature is equal to T2 minus T1. So my delta H of my surroundings is going to equal 50 grams, since we're assuming that the final mass of our solution is based on the density of water, times 4.18 joules per degree C per gram times my temperature change which is going to be 23.7 minus 22.5 okay and I'm going to write the overall temperature change right here so it's um, 1.2 degrees centigrade so the delta H of the surroundings was equal to 250.8 joules. Now, to find the delta H of my system, all I have to realize is that the value for the system is the same in magnitude as it was for the surroundings, but we're going to change the sign to indicate that my system released energy. So we need a negative sign here. Now, we're not done because the problem is calling for the delta H of reaction per mole. So what we need to do now very quickly is we need to find the moles of the zinc so it's going to be 0.103 grams of zinc all right unit multiplier method one mole of zinc is um, 65.37 grams and so we've got a total of point oh oh one five seven moles of zinc metal that was reacted so we're gonna bring that term up here because what we want to do now is we need the delta H of the system per mole so this is gonna be minus two hundred and fifty point eight joules and we're gonna divide it by the moles that went into the reaction so moles is zinc so the delta H of reaction per mole of zinc is equal to minus 159 
0.7 kilojoules. So I just took the number and divided by 1,000 per mole of Zn. Now this value is related to the balanced equation because you'll notice that in the balanced equation that the coefficient for zinc is 1. So actually what we found here is the delta H of reaction per mole per mole of balanced equation. So this is the amount of, of energy that will be released when one mole of zinc reacts with two moles of hydrochloric acid to produce one mole of zinc chloride and one mole of hydrogen gas. Once we know the per mole value, the delta H, based on the balanced chemical equation, we can figure out the amount of, re of energy released for any amount, a, a mass amount or molar amount of any of the, the components of this balanced equation that we wish to calculate for.